Joe Turo Amagi and I continued looking for the Morgana Factor as part of CC Corp's Project GU. After collecting each epitaph for Scaith, Ennis, Magus, Fidhel, Gore, Maha, Tarvos, and Corbenic, we managed to complete eight epitaph users. All we then had to do was allow the Chosen Ones to control these epitaph users, then have them activate the RA program that Amagi had created in order to restore Aura to existence. To put it simply, this involved unleashing the immense power of Morgana's eight phases into the network. However, during preparation for the final stage, I realized that there was something incredibly dangerous that could occur in rebooting the Morgana Factor. The use of a power that shouldn't exist, strong enough to revive Aura, the ultimate AI. Doing so could produce giant distortions all over the internet. These distortions were basically anti-existences. They had also occurred during the Morgana incident. Kite's bracelet, given to him by Aura, unleashed a force, and it was this force that created the nightmarish Kubia. running away. Fine, then let's settle this. For just once. I'll stick with you till the end. If the distortion field produced from a single bracelet resulted in Kubia, there was no telling what the distortion caused from eight powerful epitaph users might do. The salvage of the eight pieces of the Morgana Factor would literally become a gathering of the unwilling. Distortions would appear randomly like unwanted tumors. I reported these findings to Amagi and urged him to put the RA plan on hold until my concerns could be resolved. But Amagi refused, saying that the distortion produced earlier was due to hidden bugs in the Herald system. He said the RA program he designed would never allow anything like that to occur. He laughed at my concerns. With our rivalry and the envy of the genius Harold Hewitt consuming him, Amagi began to press ahead with the RA plan at all costs in order to prove his own abilities.